Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. We wanted to do a quick video today because um, behind us here that we've that we've had in the last few videos is our shelf wall shelves of all of our board games that we have, and so and we do have quite a few of them. <laughs> so yeah, we have a lot of board games, and so we wanted to sit down and do a top five list of the board games that we have and all the board games we've played because I've played a lot more than I have here because I used to go to a board game night every week. And we put a lot of different things, but we wanted to uh, kind of go over some our top five of the ones that we own. So, and we're gonna start from the bottom, from the least favoritist of our favorites. Okay. Got it. Yes. Okay. You want to start? Or you want me to start? I don't care. Yeah. Okay. I'll start then. Yep. So my number five is Dice Forge. And that is behind Anna <laughs> I'll put um, pictures of them all in as in the like down in the corner as we go. Um, but yeah, Dice Forge is mine, number five. I really like that game. It's, I mean, it's simple enough. Like it's it's a good in between, because it's it is kind of simple and yet it is also fairly complicated. <laughs> like, ju it's just complicated enough to make it more fun than just some you know simple game that doesn't have anything to it. <clears throat> so the kind of basic thing of Dice Forge is that you have, um, each person has two dice, and the die, the die faces on them are um, removable, and as you're going you buy different die faces off of the, the board that all do different things, and you pop your die face off and replace it with that one, and so your everybody's dies, dice look different by the end of the game, and they each like, get you different things and stuff, and so it's, just, it's, it's a lot of fun. We played it with you know, one of our group of friends that we had over once or a couple different times and mm -hmm. so that one's my number five. I really like that one. I had a really hard time picking between that one and my number five. Yeah. Yes. So that one would have been your number six? That would have been my number six. Okay. Well what's your number five? Um the the dice deck building Couriers. Yes. I she can never say the name. It's Couriers, yeah. yeah. Um, I like that one. That one is really fun. That one almost made my list too. Yeah. yeah, I I don't know. I like it because it's really not overly complicated. No, it's also pretty simple. I mean, it's so if any, any of you have ever played like a deck building game like Dominion, I have Dominion back here. If you've ever played a game like that, it's the same idea just with dice. You're collecting dice. You're buying um, dice off the board that are a monster or a spell or something like that. And it's just, it's really fun and it's goofy. Like the idea of it, it's supposed to be a spoof on deck building games. That was the whole idea. Yeah. And so it made it pretty goofy, but it's super fun. Yeah, I, I like that. it. I, I really don't like the super, like, I like super complicated games, but I'm really not into them as the same it's, way. Yeah. There's a group of our, a few of our friends that are really into the super complicated, like, three, four, five hours, you know, games or like four more. Which can be fun for me. I don't necessarily mind them sometimes, but even for me, and I'm more of a board gamer than she is, but even for me, it gets a little much after a while. Um, that's why I like Warriors, is it's it's pretty simple and it doesn't take a long time to play or catch on or anything like that. Yeah, it usually goes pretty quick. So. Okay. So, my number four is... <laughs> so the actual name of this game is Camel Up. We always call it Camel Cup. Yeah, is that your number four too? <laughs> that is one hundred percent my number four. So that's both of that's both of our number fours. <laughs> yeah, so the game is actually called Camel Up. We have always called it Camel Cup. Um, her because that's how she's just heard it pronounced by all of my group, our group of friends. I actually wrote Camel Up oh, the, at first, and then I added the C afterwards. <laughs> like if you look at the way that I wrote it, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My C is like super mm -hmm. in there. It's like really in there. <laughs> but in. I'll have the picture down on the bottom, but just so that you can kind of see what I'm talking about, or I can illustrate what I'm talking about. Does this C not look like it encompasses <laughs> both camel and cup? Like that's, it looks like that. And it kind of ended up sticking, uh, us calling it camel cup, because the the guy that um, owned the board game shop that we used to go to every week, his name was Jason. And when we first called it camel cup, he got really upset. He was like, no, it's camel up because the camels will stack on top of each other. And we were like, no, no, it's camel cup. See, it says camel cup. The whole thing became because it was irritating. That's why we kept calling it that. <laughs> yeah, it's a really fun game. It's um, 
essentially you're betting on camel races. And so you're betting on which camel is going to be in the lead um, after each leg of the, of the race. You're betting on which camel is going to win the whole race. You're betting on which camel is going to lose the race. It's just kind of a fun game of just betting on camel races. Yeah. It's just super fun. And then you like you use, you get to roll the die to make the camels move and stuff like that. So Anna usually wins that game. She's apparently really good at um, betting on camels. <laughs> No, I just have a very good strategy, and nobody has figured it out yet, so I'm just going to hold <laughs> on to that little secret and <laughs> not the, tell The anybody. rest of us, we don't necessarily play games to it. That's what I like about our group of friends that plays games. None, almost none of us, except for maybe a couple in the last group that we played with, but for the rest of us, like me, you, Ron, like yeah. none of us really play to win. We play for fun, um, with the exception of me and Ron. Me and Ron play to <laughs> not lose. That's... As long as we beat one person, we don't care. I, um... I, I like to have good strategy, and I like to win. It's not mm -hmm. like... It's yeah. not like I'm not, like, trying. But, um, that's one of the reasons I like Camel Cup, is because it's really lighthearted, and yeah, it's it not, is. like... It's, it's a lot of fun. Even if you lose, it really doesn't feel like you lost because the mm -hmm. whole gameplay is so fun and engaging that... Yeah. Whatever. Right. Okay, let's move on to number three for me is Takenoko. And she... <laughs> Is that what you put? <laughs> I put panda game, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. We've been around each other too much. Obviously. <laughs> so yes, she calls it panda game. The actual title is Takenoko. Mm -hmm. Not Takenoko. Um, and it's it's a super fun game. I, we've played it with my, my parents and my sister and brother-in-law too. And Miss Megan. And, and we played it with, with yeah. my mom, I think, too. Did we play it with your mom? Yeah, yeah, I think we did because yeah, we were having issues with this the table being tiny. Yeah, <laughs> so, started running out of space on the table. Yeah, we did. Um, yeah, that's a pretty fun game. Like the whole idea is you're building a a garden, the emperor's garden, and you're adding on to it, and you're growing bamboo of different colors, and you're trying to get like certain numbers of the section to grow in certain patterns sometimes, and you're making the panda go around and eat the bamboo. And just trying to make the best garden for the emperor that you can, and you're trying to co um, complete goal cards. Mm -hmm. So, it's it's pretty fun. It's another game that's that's lighthearted and it never gets too too crazy. I was gonna say I don't think like, cause like I'm I'm definitely I'm not like I wouldn't say I'm a sore loser, but I'm not like like it like if I'm losing a game that I tried really <clears throat> hard on, like it is kind of upsetting. Mm -hmm. But pan the panda game is just one that I whatever it doesn't matter same with camel cup is like i can i can take it or leave it like if i right. lose i lose whatever it doesn't feel yeah. like that devastating mm -hmm. crushing loss and so yeah because there's some games like i think i think ticket to ride for some at least for some people like ticket to ride can be one of those games it's like I if you it. if you lose it just like ruins your whole day i don't like play i like playing ticket to ride but like I don't like playing Ticket to Ride with people who are really who are good really? at it. <laughs> it's not that I'm good at it, I just, I know what to do. And it, like, it, those, that's a game that really does get to me, because, yeah. like, I try yeah, really we, hard. We do play it and, still, but it's just, it's pretty few and far between when we play that game. Yeah, and that's from, play with my parents for that reason, because mm -hmm. I just, mm, brain does not She do doesn't good. like losing that game. There's a couple of games like that. I don't like losing at Splendor. Even though I pretty much always lose that game, I don't like losing this one. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why I'm really good at that game. I don't, I, I don't know why I'm so bad at that game. Let's put it that either. way. I don't think it's that you're really good at it. You are pretty good at it, but I think it's just that I'm terrible at that game. <laughs> I don't know why. But, so yeah, apparently our number three is the same too. Don't be looking at my list. I'm not. Okay. I'm, pretty, I'm almost positive that our number ones are the same. So if our number twos are the same, I'm gonna be. <laughs> That's gonna be pretty fun. So number two for me is kittens in a blender. Not the same. Okay, so it's different. So kittens in a blender. This one's just a super fun card game. I actually found it on accident once when I was shopping for a Christmas present for her, and I just like came across it and I was like, that looks like a game that she might enjoy. Not because she liked putting kittens in a blender, but. <laughs> Um, but it just looked like kind of a fun game and it was like a, a quick game. It's one of those, it's kind of a pocket game. Um, yeah. and so, and we played it 
pretty soon after we got it because I gave it. You unwrapped it on Christmas Eve that year, and then I think we played it Christmas Day maybe. This was before we had Aiden. Yeah. And I think we played it like Christmas morning or something like that before we went there, or we went down to Sterling and then played it with them too. I don't remember. Um, but... Yeah, we played it pretty soon after we got it. And yeah, it was super fun. I was really happy that we got it. It's really fun to play with a decent group of people. We have the expansion now that allows you to play with six people. And so that's what we did in our last game night, was we played that at the end of the night. And it usually goes pretty quick. With six people like we had, it took, took a little bit longer. longer. It ended up, usually it's like a, maybe a 20-30 minute game, and it ended up being like an hour and 15 minutes. But, I but it was also because, we, I think we were, the, yeah, because Ron hadn't played it either. Mm -mm. I think it was just you and I that had played that game before, yeah. so we were also teaching the game at the same time, so that didn't matter. Yeah. And, so, and we were also like, because this is the first time we've played with the expansion, isn't it? No, second time. Is it? Mm -hmm. Well, it's the second time I've played. I know that I've played with it before, with, um my Uncle Jim and I think my dad was playing too, and uh, okay. Kayla. I don't think I was playing okay. then. It might have just been me and him. And so we're still figuring out some of like the rules and the mechanics yeah. of some of and so the... we still had to, I still had to like open the rule book and or the rule little sheet. Yeah, and it was just the yeah. expansion stuff that was giving us, yeah. yeah, that we kind of were throwing off Yeah. But yeah, Kitten, Kittens in a Blender is a good one. I just, mm -hmm. um, I only put one card game on here, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, right, so what's your number two? Um, my second favorite is Nom Cubes. <laughs> yes, the game that she calls Nom Cubes <laughs> is actually called King of New York. Um, it's kind of a, not necessarily a sequel, but it's made by the same company. And it's kind of a follow up to the game um, King of Tokyo. And she calls it Nom Cubes because the first time I was teaching her how to play it, there's little energy cubes that act as currency, and I pull them out and I held them up and I was like and then we have these little guys and she was and she was immediately goes do they nom them no they're currency and I'm pretty sure they nom them all right whatever if they nom them fine and so from then on she just always calls it nom cubes nom cubes and so yeah the game of New York is really fun because the idea is that you are a giant monster there yeah I think it's called like hydro and uh so like you're essentially a Godzilla status monster and you're trying to smash up things in um manhattan or well this is just new york in general they have all of the boroughs on the new york they have queens brooklyn all of the, like the bigger boroughs mm -hmm. and so you're trying to be the monster that either gets the most victory points or doesn't die because you can punch the other monsters in the face and it's great mm -hmm. that's usually how i end up losing is because either anna or or ron when he's playing with us just end up punching me in the face until i die it's you know, fantastic. <laughs> so, but that's another one that's pretty lighthearted, and even if you lose, it's just it's so much fun that you don't really care that you lost. So, it is pretty lighthearted. I like that. Yeah. Is that kind of why you like that one too? Is yeah. That one is just kind of like the giant monsters. And well, I like <laughs> the giant monsters, and I like kind of the concept of the game, and mm -hmm. and I like that there's several different mechanics that you're having to do during the game because you're not only are you fighting the other monsters but you're also fighting the military yeah, the military they should because if you smash a building then it flips the tile over and the military shows up so then you have to worry about them yeah yeah and then you're also trying to gain victory points but then you're also trying to collect these cards that help you gain victory points or yeah. help you beat up other people from the yeah. monsters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I like that there's several different mechanics that you're playing. That's... Yeah, and I think that's why I like that one over King of Tokyo, because I played that one once. And we don't have that one, but I played that one once. And I think that's the thing I like about King of New York better, is that there's more going on in King of New York. But it doesn't overcomplicate the game. Right, yeah. You know, there's, there it just is kind of a, adds to it. Yeah, I was going to say, there is a lot that you can do and different things to do. But it doesn't make the game too much. Right. It's still a pretty short and quick game. Usually it is, yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Guess Number what one, is. I think, is the same for both of us. Should we say it at the same, same time? Sure. Ready? Three, two, one. Smash, Smash up. up. Yep. Smash up. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen as soon as, as soon as we decided to make this video. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, Smash Up is both my number ones. It is Smash Up is a super fun game. And it's it's the one card game that she was saying that she put on her list. 
So the idea of Smash Up is you have um, different factions of cards, and you take two of these factions, they have 20 cards in each faction, and you take two of these factions and you smash them up in order to try and control different, um, what are they called, bases, different bases. And you get victory points for being the, you know, having the most power at whichever base. And so it's it's a really fun game to play with a lot of people because you can play with as many like as many people as you have, you know, pairs of factions. You can play with that many people, and it's I also just really fun to experiment with different factions too. I think. I think because we played it with six people. Right? Yes. Yes. I feel like like it's possible. I mean, we have the, we also had other things going on. Yeah, we were playing Smash Up, but at the same time, two of the people that were playing Smash Up with us were also playing Mario Party. Yeah, so, so that it, made it like just, just drew it out. But this. <laughs> I I think that four is a really good number for yeah, this game. Yeah, really good. When we played it with my sister and brother-in-law, it was it was pretty fun. Or even just two. Like I really like playing it just one on one. Just the two of us, yeah. And, and part of the reason I like that is also because you and I have really good concept of the game and so I can actually play the way I like to play Smash Up and not feel bad. She likes to find the most powerful combinations of factions it's... and so she usually wins because I just take two random factions that I think would be fun like dragon riding vikings or something like that and or take the dragons and the vikings and smash those up and see what happens or the power rangers and like when they have power rangers and magical horses. I think I had last time. No, princesses. It was Power Rangers and princesses. I I mean, like, yes, I like finding combinations that work really well, but I just have a really good knack for finding, like, mm -hmm. not only combinations, but when I just put random things together, finding how they can play off yes. of each other. Yeah. Even if that means that I end up ignoring one faction and just cycling my deck so that I can get to those other cards. Yeah. You know. And so I just have a really good knack for deck building games, and so um, I really like Smash Up for that reason. Mm -hmm. But that's part of the reason I like playing just the two of us because then I don't feel bad when I do really well. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> because I, I that's one thing that like when we play with new people who have never played before or who maybe aren't as good at it, yeah, I feel awful because yeah. because I can just put two things together and mm -hmm. I can make it go yeah and so that's but I, I really do like smash up though yeah, that is like my fun. favorite game if, that I've ever every, played out of every game that we have on our shelf if anybody were to say what what's one game that you should play smash up is gonna be yes. what we tell you it's a 100%. it's really good for seasoned gamers as well as new gamers it is really good for both it's a really good introductory game it is. So. I love Smash. It's yeah. great. Yeah, so that is our top five list. They were incredibly similar <laughs> top five lists. Yeah, they were. <laughs> We've been around each other too long. I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's our, our top five favorite board games that we have on our, on our shelf back here. So hopefully here before too long we'll be able to do a video where we're actually just playing one of those games. That's kind of one of the yeah. things that I want to want to do. So yeah, we'll have to get we need to get a different tripod that we can hang over yeah, the like table. That. Yeah, so that we can be able so that we would be able to film. Yeah. over the tabletop. So yeah, without having to just hold it up. And, <laughs> yeah, because we can do that too. But we'll have to see. So hopefully we'll be able to do that pretty soon. Yeah, hopefully. So, but until next time, don't forget to thank, thank the Phoenicians. Phoenicians.